What is the best beef in the country? Well, that is the question we're asking today. I had the incredible honor to go down to Riverton, Wyoming, because I was invited to be a celebrity judge to taste test the best beef in the country. How, we're, how this is gonna be judged is everybody brings their beef, the same guy cooks it. Yes. So that it's even playing field. We try and make it as even as possible so that, um, you know, you're not gonna know who it is. It's double blind. Um, he only cooks them in the order that they're done. There's only one other person that knows whose these are, and that is the person that does the draw, and then he assigns a number to each steak, and it comes to the chef out of the package with just a number in it so that it's as random as possible. So the chef doesn't know and the judges do. Correct. Gotcha. And so um, you will just judge, you know, you'll get a one to two ounce serving. You don't have to eat it all, um, but you'll have some prompts on a card as to what you do and you know how you're gonna score each of the criteria that we've given you. And, um, and then the top four from the New York Strip division, everybody gets a New York Strip, uh, the top four come back with their ribeye, and then that's who gets the buckles and the prizes. Gotcha. Yep. Cool. And then you said you did get your hay in done, or? Oh, yeah. Late, late, and, you know, in despair and ran over phones and everything else. So, yeah. yeah so, Tyler's been, you know, this is, kind of, you've been, you're kind of putting a lot of this part on, right? You're heading we, this up? We or? run about 500 pairs and then 100 head of replacement heifers, and then we grow all our own hay, and then we also finish about 60 to 80 beef a year, um, and that's our business, Wyoming Cowboy Cuts, and um, so yeah, it, it's a full-time deal. And Andy's helping put this yeah. on, so. <laughs> yeah. And like he's got all the time in the world. Yes. <laughs> and nothing's broke down at home. No, it's all smooth. good. Yeah, it's all good. there's no cows getting out. No. Usually, in my in my experience, if you get about 50 miles away, that's when is when everything goes to heck. It, things break down, cows leave, and I have horses a great, get out. Great guy at home helping, and well, that's he, he's gonna keep everything in check for the rest of today, and then I'll have to pump up and get it all done tomorrow. There you go. Yeah. Cool. Right. Well, thanks, Tyler. Yeah, thanks. So there was a total of eight judges. Myself, Dr. Anthony Chafee from Australia, who's big into the carnivore diet, uh, an incredible Western artist, and a business owner from right there in Riverton in the food industry, and also four of our Special Forces heroes. The eight of us were tasked with judging the best beef in the West, and then that evening they had a dinner which was the best beef in Wyoming. So Wyoming is not included in the best beef in the West contest, except for the winner from the previous year. Look at this. this I'll tell you what, that looks fantastic. Wait till you try it. <laughs> Wait till you try it. This is gonna be very difficult to not score them too high. Well, that's just it. At the beginning, because you got so many. How many do we have to try? Uh, whatever's even. So, so like, yeah, so like 10. Eight of them. Like two minus three. Yes. Yeah. There you go. Eight. Look at this. Yeah. Oh my word. <laughs> How in the world are we going to The thing that we want, we want this steak that's going to win. We want this to be the same that notes you, Yes, we'll give you an extra sheet of paper for notes as well. We want this to be the state that when you talk about it, it goes um, firstborn, marriage, this state. This state. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So we had to score them on three categories, one to ten. And each category was one for texture, one for smell, and one for flavor. Thank you. How to what? Just like what they say, like on a scale of one to ten. Because like you said, we may just rate these high and we get something to take better. Crap! Now we got to go back. That's what we we're going to have to have notes for this. That's why I'm not scoring here. Yeah. Well, I did. Yeah. True. So like, I might have to. Like, I might be scribbling out numbers and drop them. Mm -hmm. and get something that tastes better too. Because you want to make sure that you have. So every right. steak that we tasted that day was on par with the best steaks that I've ever eaten. So this is really difficult when you have to go through 10 at the same time and rate them. And we're not talking about like, oh, this is a bad steak and this is a good steak. We're talking about the texture 
and the quality of the flavor of the beefiness and I mean it, it was it, it, you're getting technical because there is such good steak in front of you every single time. It was so difficult and mm -hmm. and it wasn't mm -hmm. it was one of the best jobs I've ever had. <laughs> you can see there's a difference in texture. You can't smell it because we're we're grading on smell. But <laughs> believe me, <coughs> it's worth smelling. This is exceptionally difficult. There's only been two. Yeah, I think it's still, yeah. Wow. Six more to go. See, that's why I just put notes right now. I'm trying I'm to remember. Rip this Texture is so amazing of a perfect steak because these, the meats would literally, the, the fibers of the meat would fall apart in your mouth and not in a grainy way or a tough way. It was, it had like a crust on the outside, the perfect amount of crust on the outside, just like a bark on a slow cooking, but it was, the texture of a really tender beef is really incredible. It's it's not soft like a mushy, it's like a firm, but fall apart when you bite it. Fantastic. As close as you can. So this is technically supposed to be, the beef is the only difference. So they're, they're seasoning it with only salt and pepper, right? Yep. And then they're grilling it, same guys grilling it. Same grills, and we literally put the same pellets in both grills. Same pellets in both grills. So it should be as close as you can get to control, basically. And then, so the, that to try to get the beef to, to be the standout factor. This is going to be extremely difficult. I, after tasting two, I don't have any idea how I'm going to ever do this. But a lot more deck and deck, except for texture. Yeah, it's texture was different. Te texture was different on that, which is amazing. I, when you're tasting beef like this, he was just saying, it's really hard to understand because you don't get to do this. You don't get to taste beef like side by side, like one and then the other. It's not like you get six steaks usually and then you pick which one's best. So it's, it's interesting to see the difference in texture because there is definitely a difference in texture in these two. Well, it's not, not that it wasn't delicious. Right. It was excellent, absolutely, it was noticeable. Yeah, and that's that's going to be that's going to have to do with how it's finished and the breed of cow. So it can have yes, because that can be their meat will grow differently. So it can be like a belted Galloway or or a Wagyu or an Angus or it, and I, so I've even heard that there's there's some that are Angus crossed with a Holstein. You know what an Angus a Holstein? Yeah, that's the black and white milk cow. So, and it, I have tried, I've, I've talked about this before, but I've tried Holstein before just on its own. Holstein is one of the best tasting beef meats there is. Half of the calves born are going to be male. And what right. are they going to do? They're going to do something. Yeah. So, I mean, literally, I was watching a thing. There's a ranch out of California yes. that is all Holstein beef, 100%. They sell around the country. And they were the it's slower that, growing. It is. It takes longer well, to get to where these It's the are. mindset because the marketing yeah. so for so long has been black Angus steaks. Yes. Black Angus. Right. Black cow is going to taste better. And that's called, they've marketed to you for black eggs. They it's 100%. <laughs> and it's a conversation that Tyler and I have had numerous times because I literally just dropped two Holstein steers off at Tyler's yeah. house this week to finish out. Mm -hmm. And I grew up on it. Um, sure, and the sirloin they're, might they're be, fantastic. And the sirloin might be that big might because be they're huge. such a big animal. Yeah. But still, it's a lot of it's going to go into what they're fed at the end. And then, I mean, whether it's grass-fed or green-fed, too, and that's where we're going to get some of the texture. But like you said, the breed's going to be specific on that a little bit as well. Mm -hmm. so I think this is the fun part of all this. Yeah, it's going to be difficult. And what was your name again? I'm Brian Tucker with High Mountain Seasoning. So With High Mountain Seasoning, which yep. is it? So you guys make seasoning? We do, yeah. Or beef and... Beef. So we are big in jerky-making kits, sausage-making kits, rubs, dips, marinades. We're right here out of Riverton, so my office is literally across the street. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't have to go quite as far as that guy who came from Australia. Yeah, yeah, I'm close. <laughs> okay, so this, this is a really, really tough job, as you can tell. It's really hard to eat the best steak in the whole country. That's really hard. Look at that. Yeah, that is fantastic. I mean, you're cutting with a plastic knife. Cutting them with plastic. You could just bite it off if you wanted to. Mm. Oh boy, that is phenomenal. 
So I don't know. I, I think, I'm not sure though. This one has a real beefy, heavy, beefy smell more than the other ones. And I enjoy it. Yeah. So, that is phenomenal. Ken is definitely the actual one. This is the one. These are the New York oh. shows. Just wait till we get to the boys. <laughs> mm. Okay. Yeah. This was. These two are quite a bit different. They're better in texture. Mm -hmm. Actually, mm -hmm. yeah, they're both. Both of them are absolutely mm -hmm. yeah, Both of these are Google the top. Mm -hmm. Now, the only thing is, that is this eight, this eight, 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 oh my God, yeah. I, I don't know. So we don't have any idea what that is, the last one that we ate, but that thing, the texture, the flavor is just a, a notch above. So I don't know what that even is. No idea. It's red meat. So I'm assuming it came from a cow. That's what I'm assuming. Okay, so this is my last one that I'm going to try, and then they're doing a final round. So then they'll go assess the best ones, and they're going to do a different kind of steak with those four, the top four. So I'm going to try this one. This is... It's amazing. So we're we're actually getting to be beef snobs at this point, right? I mean, we've, at this point, we're like, oh yeah, this one's. I mean, this this is not as good as the last one, and this is probably super quality. I mean, this tastes amazing, but comparatively, I'm gonna have to get okay, so this is the final round, and this is a ribeye, and we're supposed to judge between these four right here. There's two over there, two over here. So, no, there was a couple that definitely stuck. But there was just some that that are, are above. I would like to know, <laughs> really would like to know, like the breed and how they were how they were raised, how they were fed. Right. What was it? Yeah. What did they do different? Yeah. Like, is this a corn? Was it grass? Did I prefer grass? corn all fed? Grass? Or? Was it all, what type of grass were they eating? Or? I yeah. will say one of tonight's competitors finishes with wine. Really? Seriously. Yep. How they give them the I've heard of that. No I've idea. Heard of that's kind of like Kobe beef. They almost force feed them beer, right? Yeah. 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 So I, that, yeah. I don't think you have to force feed them beer, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, beer they'll drink. Yeah. 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 Green. Yeah. Liquid, yeah. liquid yeah. grain, basically. Oh, yeah. And yeah. sugar. Yeah. And they like sugar. Oh, yeah. All right. I can see that. So we're gonna, I'm going to go through the number four, the four through one, and just tell you what they are, what breed they are, and what they were fed, if, if it's available. And you're really going to be surprised, I think, at number one. Number four was Mountain View Meats in Fort Collins, Colorado. So Mountain View Meats raises mostly Angus, but they're crossed with a few things like Charlet, Red Angus, things like that, but mostly Angus. Now they believe, and which is probably true, that most of what goes into the flavor and texture of a, of a good beef is actually what they're fed at the end. So they're fed a mixture of alfalfa hay, hay or straw, corn silage, cracked corn, minerals and uh, brewers distillers grain so the grain that they use they use it to brew beer and then after they're finished with it a lot of the um the things that cause animals to bloat is out of it and then they feed that to their cattle as well so that's number four so number three is and i hope i pronounce this right it's either goet or goetti farms so goetti farms near austin minnesota so this is really interesting to me because it doesn't say what breed of cattle that they have but very similar in how they're fed they're fed distillery grain which is not from a beer distillery it's actually from the byproduct of making ethanol so when you make ethanol you also have the byproduct of the grain and then corn silage from what they actually use is the leftover stuff from when they can corn so it's a byproduct from canning corn that's what they fed so corn 
and this uh, and distillery grain is very similar in how these are being fed. So let's go to number two. Sorry, so the Goetti or Goet Farms, that was actually an Angus-based breed as well. So the second place is Burley Brothers Country Butchery in Attica, New York. I wasn't, I wasn't able to quite figure out the breed or what they feed their cattle. This was my personal favorite when I was taste testing this totally blind. So uh, it's uh, absolutely amazing beef. Whatever they're feeding and doing is, is incredible. So you can check them out as well. So let's go to the number one. The number one in the country of what we tasted. Uh, incredible, incredible flavor and texture and smell of this beef was was uh, absolutely above and beyond. So the number one beef that we tasted from around the entire nation was actually from Sawmill Creek Farms from Richmond, Michigan. Now this is gonna surprise you because I, I'm not sure how it was fed at the end, but this was a Holstein. And so when, when we were talking about Holsteins earlier, we had no idea if there was one in the bunch or half of one or or like a half Angus, half Holstein. Now we've been kind of really marketed to think that the best tasting is Angus, and it's right up there. I mean, obviously we have number two and uh, number three are Angus, Angus based, so they are Angus up in the top four. But the top one, pretty new, unanimously amongst this group of judges, was a Holstein steer. So I hope that was enjoyable for you to watch. It was definitely enjoyable for me to taste and I would be happy to do it again anytime. So thank you for watching. I'm Trinity Van Den Until next time, God bless.